Job hunting is stressful and since I lost my engineering job about eight weeks ago, here's how my job hunt search is going right now. But first, I just want to say I'm only sharing this to show you what it's like to job hunt in today's economy for an engineering role. There's no magical secret when you're job hunting, it can just take time to find the right company. I'll organize this video by first talking about the updates I did to my resume, then I'll talk about all the job interviews I got with that resume. Because when you lose a job, obviously the first thing you have to do is build a resume. I started recalling the old project that I did at work and writing about five to six bullet points to kind of summarize that experience. Making sure to emphasize what I did, how I did it, and the results of the projects that I worked on. After I finished writing my five to six bullet points, I copy them and paste them in a Google Doc. Then I'd write roughly a 250 word paragraph explaining each bullet point in more detail. The reason I do this is because in an interview situation, you're probably going to be asked to elaborate on your resume bullet points. So instead of scrambling to come up with something on the spot, it's nice to have something ready that you've already practiced saying. For example, here's a random bullet point that you can have on your resume. Design electronic enclosures using SOLIDWORKS to be sheet metal formed while using DFM principles to reduce part costs by 15%. An interviewer will want to know things like what material did I use to make this enclosure? How thick was that material? What exact DFM principles did I use? And how did that lead to cost reduction? They'll also ask me to explain the different processes under sheet metal forming. Or if the part was die casted instead of sheet metal formed, would you make any design changes? What would you improve on your design if you could do it all over again? What design requirements did you have going into this project? And what testing did you do to make sure these requirements were met? So I make sure the detailed paragraph corresponding to that bullet point answers all these questions. After that, I sent out my resume and started applying to jobs on LinkedIn. And in general, when I'm looking for a job, I have a few bare minimum requirements that I'm looking for. Engineering work that's interesting. Flexibility to work from home, it doesn't have to be fully remote. Chill team members and making at least 125k per year. This number is obviously adjusted for tech salaries. And usually when I apply to a job, I don't know if it meets these requirements until I do at least one job interview. Anyways, I had my first mechanical engineering interview on November 28th, 2022. It was with a recruiter at a startup that builds robots for the farming and agricultural industry. The call with the recruiter was pretty simple. She just asked me to summarize my past work experience as well as why I left my current job. Obviously, she didn't have a technical background, so I didn't go into too much technical detail when I was talking about my work. I just kept it pretty high level and just mentioned a few keywords that I know she's looking for for a mechanical engineering role, like SOLIDWORKS, GDNT, DFM, etc. Afterwards, she explained to me what the interview process with the startup was like. It was made up of three stages. First, a recruiter phone screen, which is what I was doing at the moment. Second, a technical interview with two mechanical engineers on the team, explaining a past project that I worked on in a lot of technical detail. If that goes well, the final interview stage would be me delivering a presentation in front of the CEO, CTO, and five engineers on their hardware team, so about seven people in total. Anyways, after the call with her ended, she emailed me to schedule the next interview, which I had scheduled for December 1st. Now, as December 1st rolls around, I find an old presentation that I did for my engineering capstone project in my fourth year of engineering. So I choose to present that because I can't make a technical, detailed presentation about any of my work at of robotics or Tesla because I signed NDAs. The tech scene in the Bay Area tends to be really secretive and they take that stuff very seriously. Anyways, the interview starts a couple minutes late and we just have a bit of small talk. Hi, is it Tamer? Tamer? Yep, Tamer, that's me. How's it going? Pretty good. How are you? How's both of your mornings been so far? Almost every interview starts off like that. Then they tell me a bit about themselves and the company, and then they ask me to tell them about myself. I'll start off with like our most recent work experience and then kind of work my way backwards. <laughs> But yeah, anyways, before that, I worked at Tesla as a mechanical design engineer right out of uh, university. So that's kind of why I'm uh, on the hunt right now um, for another mechanical engineering position. After I do that, they tell me they're looking to fill this role really quickly, ideally within a week. That's a bit of a red flag sometimes because it usually means if they're going to hire you that fast that you're going to be overworked. Anyways, they then asked me to share the presentation that I had prepared for them. So I share my screen and start talking about the project. So first, the project we called Happy. And it's essentially just... In order to solve a problem like this, I'd have to break it down into a bunch of different system functions. Kind of the validation plan that I use to test each of the system functions. Using 661T6 aluminum. Or if I'm designing something for CNC machining or injection molding, there's a bunch of like rules of thumb that I like intend to follow uh, fillets try to avoid undercuts 
sharp corners. As I'm presenting, he asked me a few technical questions about the project. He asked if it was made for high volume manufacturing, what would I change in my design and why? He also asked me to elaborate on the testing procedures that I had implemented in the project. I think I answered those pretty well. He then asked me if I had a lot of experience working with FEA software, but I was honest and said I don't have too much experience because I didn't work with it a lot at my job. Finally, right before the interview ended, I asked him these three questions. Could you give me examples of projects I'd be working on? What's the work environment like at the company? And how big is the team? I just like to ask those because it gives me an idea of what working there could potentially be like. The interview then ended and within a few hours, they sent me another email saying they want me to come to their office to do the final stage interview. So I had scheduled that for December 6th, but before that, I had two other interviews with two other companies scheduled, so let me tell you about those. Interview number three was also on December 1st, and it was with a startup called PAX for a mechanical design engineering position. They're a company in the cannabis industry. Yep, weed. Honestly, I didn't know that when I was applying to the position. I just saw mechanical engineering opportunity, so I just clicked apply. Anyway, during the interview, they asked me to talk about myself a bit and my past work experiences. Then she told me about herself, her background, and what the company does. In summary, it seemed like they made weed vapes. So after she finished explaining it, she asked me, how do you feel about that? So I was honest, my response was, can I smoke it for free? Smoke weed every day. Nah, 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 I'm just kidding. My real response was, I'm uncomfortable working with cannabis because it's against my religion. In Islam, any form of intoxication is haram. But hypothetically speaking, even if smoking weed wasn't against my religion, I still wouldn't take that job because it will kind of lock me in that cannabis industry. If I worked there for two or three years, it would be hard to transition to any other industry like consumer electronics, EVs, etc. So yeah, I rejected them. Now, before I talk about my next interview, let me tell you about Vessi or response sponsoring this part of the video. During this wet and winter season, it could be nice, bright, and sunny in the morning, and then wet and gloomy in the evening. So you don't know whether you should wear a pair of light sneakers or heavy and bulky winter boots. Sneakers make it easy to move and run, but your feet will get wet. On the other hand, bulky waterproof boots will keep your feet nice and dry, but it's hard to move in them. That's where Vessi comes in. They make comfortable shoes that are 100% waterproof and are easy to move in. This is me, and I'm trying to get to the other side of the park but it's all wet and filled with snow. With my Vessies, that's not a problem. I can run across this field and my socks and feet are fully dry and warm. I honestly didn't believe it when I first got them, but the reason it works is because these shoes are made from a material called Dymatex, which is a knit material that keeps your feet cool in the summer and warm in the winter. The shoe I'm wearing in this video is the Vessi Storm Burst. Check it out on other styles at Vessi.com Tamer. You can also use my code Tamer to get 15% off your entire order. Anyways, back to the interviews. On December 2nd, 2022, I had an interview with another robotic startup for a mechanical engineering role in the Bay Area. The interview starts off and he immediately butchers my name. Is it Amir? Am I pronouncing it correctly? I correct him, but he doesn't waste any time with small talk and immediately gets into the interview. So, uh, just to give some structure to this interview, uh, we have, I guess, uh, 60 minutes. The way we go about this and spend the first couple of minutes learning a little bit more about your background. So yeah, he asked me to tell him about myself and he also asked me to go into a lot of technical detail in one of my previous projects. So yeah, to get us started, I'll talk a little bit about myself. So uh, most recently, my uh, most recent work experience is at a company called Server Robotics. I screw bosses and creating the ribbing structure around that. During the interview, he kept asking me a lot of technical questions about my past work experience, but I wasn't able to answer those in a lot of technical detail because I had signed NDAs and I'm not able to just say so much technicality in an interview. So I try to vaguely answer it and then say, so I can't talk too, too much about that one. And they're usually pretty understanding because almost every company in the Bay Area is really secretive. Make a product that you think is reasonable. Do you mind if I share my screen? For this part, I share the exact same presentation that I shared in my last interview with the farming startup. I talk about HAPPY, the non-intrusive health monitoring system that I worked on in my fourth year of engineering. Typically with the pH level, it can give you insight on like if you have early signs of diabetes, UTIs, or kidney stones. But kind of how I made this. So this part was like, you know, I added it in Fusion 360. He kept asking a ton of follow-up technical questions and they weren't pretty bad. I was able to answer them all for the most part because again, I worked on this project so I know everything about it. This kept going on for like 40 minutes and afterwards he asked me, let's jump into a technical question. Do you want a physics question or a material science question? I said, I'm, I'm fine with either, but sure, let's do physics. This was the question he asked me and it looked like he pulled it straight out of a grade 12 physics textbook. Essentially, based on the givens, what's the frictional force that any point in time. I answered it by drawing a simple free body diagram using these two equations to find the force of friction initially when it's at rest. 
Then once it starts moving, I explain how we have to use kinetic friction instead of static, but that answer was actually wrong because the keyword here was rolling. When you have a rolling ball, it's undergoing rolling friction and there's no static or kinetic friction. And rolling friction is always zero for a rolling ball. So yeah, the answer should have been zero. So yeah, I guess that's my fault. I wasn't really thinking about rolling friction. I just immediately jumped to static and kinetic friction because I haven't really worked with rolling friction since like first year of engineering. And I'm not really sure why he asked me this question because it's not really something you ever do at work. I've interviewed people before and usually when I ask technical questions, I ask stuff like, show me how you would design this or which material do you recommend for a particular application? Or maybe show them a drawing and discuss GDNT on it. Since these are things you actually do at work and it would be beneficial to see if they can respond to that answer. Anyways, they emailed me about a few days later and said they wanna go with someone else. And I'm guessing it's because I got that question wrong. Fast forward to December 6th, I had my third and final interview with the farming robotics startup. They asked me to come in person to do the job interview. All right, I just got here. I have no idea what to expect. Like their, their building isn't bad, it's, it's all right, I guess. It looks very corporate-y. And this is what the outside of their office looked like. As I walk in, they lead me to their conference room. On this TV, I connected my laptop and presented to them my resume and my previous projects. Then I head to the whiteboard and they asked me a technical question. It went like this. Let's say you have a PCBA that you need to attach on the side of a tractor. The PCBA is a rectangle that's eight inches by six inches. That's all the information I'll give you for now. Feel free to ask additional questions if you need, but I want you to tell me how you would design a bracket to attach the PCBA. It was a pretty straightforward question, but I spent like 30 minutes answering it in front of a group of like six or seven people. They then showed me around their office and it seemed very corporate-like and not very startup-y even though they claim to be a startup. They also, they didn't have a nice hardware shop in the office. And no matter how many times I asked them to tell me about what projects I could potentially be working on, they always gave a very, very vague answer. So I wasn't really interested in working for them anymore. On December 7th, at interview number six with a company called Instrumental. It seemed like pretty exciting work and they interviewed me for a hardware design engineering position. In the interview, I start off by telling them a bit about myself and a summary of my past work experiences. Then she explains to me what the interview process is like. She said after this call, there would be three stages to the interview. First, a 45 minute interview with the hiring manager. Second, a one hour technical call with two or three engineers on the team. Third, a 3.5 hour virtual onsite where I present a project to the entire engineering team. And that's a pretty standard procedure for these engineering roles in tech. The work seemed really interesting. They pay pretty well and they gave employees the flexibility to work hybrid. So I was pretty excited about it and I thought she'd schedule the next interview right away since that's what she said in our call. But a few days go by and I don't get an invitation to do the next interview. So I email her asking about it on December 12th. The next day she responds saying they decided to close this role. So that sucked since I was actually excited about this role, but oh well, the economy isn't the best right now. Moving on, December 7th, I had another interview with a technical recruiter from a startup called AVA. They make LIDARs for the autonomous vehicle industry. And if you're unfamiliar, LIDAR stands for light detection and ranging, and it's used to generate 3D digital terrain models of Earth's surface. In this interview, I first tell her a bit about myself. She then says after this call, there'll be three stages to the interview process. First, a 45 minute interview with the hiring manager. Second, a one hour technical call with a few members on the team. Third, a 3.5 hour panel interview with a bunch of engineers on the team where I'm presenting a project to them. Anyways, six days go by and I get this email. I was honestly pretty confused by it since the recruiter call seemed to go well, but that's just life, I guess. Can't dwell on it too long. Moving on, I had another interview with a startup in the smart home space. I have to keep their name a secret, but this first interview was with a recruiter. She told me the hiring process consisted of five stages. Call the recruiter, interview with the hiring manager, interview with engineering manager number one, interview with engineering manager number two, and finally an on-site interview with the team and the CEO. The recruiter call was on December 12th, it went well, and by the end of it, he had scheduled me to do the next interview with the hiring manager on December 20th. But this video is starting to get quite long, so I'll end it here for now, and then make a part two, where I share what happened in the smart home startup interview. I also had an interview with Apple, as well as a few other companies, and I'll share how those went in part two. I'll make sure to share the exact technical questions they asked. Anyways, I hope this video brought you value, and I'll have part two up next week. In the meantime, you can check out this video that I made about how to get engineering internships. Peace!